Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we consider it a privilege uh, for you to make time and join us during these broadcasts. Um, uh, we have been dealing with uh, the theme of rejecting a system of the world and embracing our identity in Christ. And in embracing our identity in Christ, what we have sought to do in the recent um, uh, episodes has been to look at uh, the order of Melchizedek um, as a vehicle of understanding our identity in Christ. Um, the order of, of Melchizedek is, the, is an eternal order uh, for the Bible is very clear uh, about um, the nature uh, of Melchizedek, the nature of Melchizedek. Uh, we are told that he <clears throat> had no beginning of days, no end of days. Uh, he had no mother or father. Uh, he was the priest of the Most High God and king of Salem. And of course his name means king of righteousness. And of course being king of Salem means he was king of peace. Um, our scripture reference is Hebrews chapter 7 uh, verses 1 and 2. Um, you may also want to uh, jot down um, um, Psalms chapter 11, verse 3. If the foundations of a godly society are destroyed, what can the Russians do? I am of the view um, uh, that uh, the Lord Jesus has done everything he was supposed to do and it is left upon us to understand what it is he accomplished how we can interact with it and how we can be able to discharge our own mandate within the context of what he has made available to us. I'm going to repeat that. I think it is upon us in this generation to marshal um, all the resources that Christ has made available. It is, uh, it is left upon us to, to become all that Christ facilitated for us to become so that we can then discharge our own mandate, that which God is sending us to do, within the context of what Christ has made available to all of us. And that is why it is quite, um, it's quite difficult to attempt to do the things of God from a place of ignorance, from a place of not knowing. And by the way, uh, even the whole issue of knowing little it is quite dangerous to the things of God. We, we cannot even begin to do. Um, we are not allowed 
to even begin to do the things of God from um, um, from the position of limited knowledge. Th th that's not that's not good. And and therefore, and that is why we must because it's it's important to understand that none of us possess knowledge that is adequate enough to, to really uh, empower us to do that which we, are support, we must do. And that is why issues of uh, relationships become important because what the Lord Jesus has done is to reveal himself not just to us, but to many others, so that each and every one of us possesses a particular perspective of Christ. And when we connect with one another, I am able to hear the perspective. I am able to benefit from that perspective and, and texture of grace. And that is why the whole issue of functioning as a body becomes important. So that we don't function as individuals, but we function like a body. Because in functioning like a body, we function from a point of every grace texture being available. We function from a position of strength. We function from a position of complete knowledge and, and that is why um, the whole issue of listen what God has been saying through other men of God listen to what God has been saying throughout generations there will be books that are written um, for our benefit on what it is God said to, to whom and, though, and therefore, those things become important. What we have also sought to do, we have, we have said, the, the, the day of the church, uh, by the day of the church, I'm I'm speaking about the new dispensation in Christ. The age of the church should not be uh, thought of to, to be existing in a vacuum. The age of the church exists within a, a configuration called the order of Melchizedek. So as a church, we are not just functioning in a vacuum, in a prophetic vacuum, in an apostolic vacuum, in a, in a, historical, in, in a historical vacuum, no. We are functioning within a, a paradigm that God has configured and called the order of Melchizedek. Life itself Um, continues within the context of this order. The whole question of restoration and the whole question of what God is sending us to do, our callings and assignments, they happen within the context of this paradigm called the order of Melchizedek. It is an order of righteousness, it is an order of justice, it is an order of peace. It is an order where there has been a fusion of the, of the priestly and the kingly. The two have been married, they have become one. And therefore, it's very important for us to understand that we are called to understand this particular configuration. And in understanding this particular configuration, 
when we understand that we have no reason to keep postponing the day of salvation. Because 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 declares that the day of salvation is today. The time of favor is today. And you understand Isaiah 61 says we are anointed to proclaim the day of the Lord's favor. We are anointed to open prison doors for prisoners. We are anointed to announce the release of captives. We are anointed to rebuild. Oh God. <laughs> That's Isaiah 61. We are anointed to rebuild ruined cities. Devastations of many generations. Things that have been devastated for a long, long time, for generations and generations, and people have begun to accept, to say, nothing can be done about this. But the Bible says we are anointed to rebuild from hopeless ruins. And therefore, we must understand that the Lord Jesus began a work, but there's an expectation that his brothers should finish the work. The Lord Jesus did his portion of the work, laying the foundation, but it is up to us to take this work forward. And one of the things that he says in Matthew chapter 28, um, uh, verses, verse 19. He says, I want you to go to the nations and disciple them. I want you to go to the nations and disciple them. And what he says in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations, then the end will come. Now, one of the things that we must understand is that salvation you would remember that in my, uh, uh, earlier in my remarks, I said 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 speaks to the day of salvation being today, not next week, not 10 years time, today. And we must understand that Salvation does not just apply to individuals only. Salvation applies to individuals, it applies to families, to communities, nations. Salvation even applies to creation itself. I mean, creation itself in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 19, Creation is groaning, awaiting for the revelation of the, the revelation of the sons of God. There is an order that must be activated on the face of the earth. It is the order of Melchizedek. It is a particular order of dominion. It is a particular order of exercising authority. It is a particular perspective of life. It is a particular ideology. It is a particular philosophy. It is a particular system built on righteousness and justice, built upon Christ. Now we are supposed to to understand 
the configuration of this order, subject ourselves to configuration by this order. If a man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. I can't emphasize that enough. We have not as yet experienced the power of a new creature. We've not seen that. We have seen people still walking, you know, in, in, in the limitations of their former life. I mean, the Bible says we must put on the new man and we must demonstrate the capacity of the new man. We must be able to see and witness the benefits of our newness in Christ. And therefore, we, we are declaring a new day. We are declaring a new season. Let the sons of God walk on the face of the earth, walking in full power. Let the kingdom of God operate at full capacity. And the kingdom of God is never going to operate at full capacity if the sons of God are not coming up. You know when God says, come up here, come up here, there are things I want to talk to you. We are supposed to function at a better speed than we are presently functioning. And so the truth is, salvation has been declared, and it is today. The day of favor is today. The day of salvation is today. The day of being heard is today. I mean, the Lord said, I have heard you. Because the day of being heard is today. So what is it that we want God to do? Because God is ready to hear. What is it that we are picking up as the agenda that God wishes we discharge, an agenda that God desires we execute. It is the reconfiguration of nations, the reconfiguration of communities. It is the reconfiguration of sectors we go to the marketplace, we reconfigure a sector. Can you imagine there are people who, who have written books and they've changed how we see certain things. Karl Marx wrote uh, books One of uh, the most famous uh, books that he has written are on uh, um, it's called the Communist Manifesto. But he also wrote uh, Das Kapital, defining how capital works. And he, he wrote many, many other works. But I'm simply saying, one old man who lived in, 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 in some apartment in England, and of course he, 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 he was German by birth, but he later migrated to England where he spent most of his uh, adult life. He wrote a book and changed the world. I mean, we don't even know how Adam Smith looks like, but he wrote a book on 
the invisible hand, how the capitalist market works. He died long ago. No one knows how he looks like. But he was able to influence how the world was going to operate for the next uh, several years, centuries. Now I'm simply saying um, it, 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 it's quite a, a dangerous suggestion to say, well, some of the things will, will remain like this until the Lord Jesus comes. Um, I am of the view that the Lord Jesus should not be seen um, as one who can exercising authority at his coming. Rather, we should understand that even now he lives in us and through us, and therefore he can execute and activate his agenda right now through his church. Because the Lord Jesus has a bride on the face of the earth. The Lord Jesus has a church, has a body on the face of the earth. And he can express himself through that body. It's just that the body has to come to a place of maturity, a place of greater coordination, so that it can understand what it is that the Lord Jesus is calling for it to do. So I'm simply saying, if people who do not know God continue to shape the future of the world while we are sitting and postponing the day of salvation, the day of salvation is today. The order of Melchizedek has been activated through Christ. It is the order of dominion. It is the order of rulership. And of course, we must also be able to say um, it is also an order uh, of, of uh, epistemology. It's, it's an order of, of, of a type of knowledge. There is a type of knowledge that God wants to uh, publish across the nations. And we must be clear of this knowledge type, of this knowledge form, so that in our proclamation, it is clear. I mean, Paul says, uh, the sound of a trumpet must be clear, because we, are, we must be able to discern which note is being placed, is being played. And therefore, our proclamation must be very clear so that we know what the proclamation means. Now, what we have done, the Russians of this generation, um, has been forever looking um, upward. You see, when, they, when the Lord Jesus ascended and the disciples were looking upward, and then the angel of the Lord comes and says, hey, you guys quit looking upward. Uh, go and do what he has instructed you to do, because the manner of his ascension will also be the manner by which he descends. And so, uh, the church is not without an agenda. Let me repeat that. The church is not without an agenda. We, we are supposed to, to, to preach the gospel and um, in order for people to to be reacquainted 
with the Savior Jesus. In order for people to be reacquainted with the high priest Jesus. The one who gave himself for us. The one who is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us even as we speak. But we must also uh, reacquaint people with Jesus the King. Um, Psalms 110 uh, says, um, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies your footstool. We must reacquaint people with Jesus the King so that in looking at Him and in embracing Jesus the King, because I'll tell you this. The Lord Jesus will express his dominion to us. Let me repeat that. The Lord Jesus is king right now. The Lord Jesus is in charge right now. The Lord Jesus is shaping history right now. Because history and time cannot escape out of his hands. Remember, everything was created for him and through him. Whether it be thrones, whether it be dominions, whether it be anything. How nice it will be if the Russians align themselves and the Lord Jesus is able to exercise dominion because listen, you must understand this whole thing of postponing the day of the Lord, this whole, this whole thing of postponing the day of Christ, I don't think it's accurate. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of the Lord's favor. Today is the day of rebuilding devastations of generations. Today is the day of rebuilding ruined cities. I think if we are able to understand that the Lord is going to activate a lot of things. Someone may ask, how is this supposed to play itself out in real life? What you are talking about, what you are teaching, how is it supposed to play itself out in real life? Simple. We have an example in the book of Genesis. Joseph is in Egypt. The heavens are able to impact Egypt through one man, a single man. You may ask, how can this be made relevant to the present configuration of society? I will quote you the book of Daniel. Daniel is in exile. He is supposed to be a slave because they have been taken from the land of Judah by force all the way to Babylon. But what does God do? He reveals himself to this young man and he affords him an opportunity to go serve in the king's palace. And so the Lord affords him issues of proximity and 
we must be very clear with this. Abas alohanem bano mkuba opti to approximate. Abas alohanem bano mkuba opti mage baso delana na bata batize. But they forget their identity and they forget their mandate because but due to a proximity. Your duty, I'm going to do so that you can see where 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 you can you feel honored. And then you lose sense of what you are supposed to do. We must not be distracted by issues or be navigated to be, to be you know, um, next to, close to, to, to certain people. Unkulukulaba be zele certain responsibilities. Offer to know about responsibility. Bawenze with your contribution. So Daniel is not confused about these matters. He is clear on the agenda that God has placed upon him. We can go further and, and take you through the book of Nehemiah. We can take you to the book of Esther. We can go to the New Testament. How God navigated Paul to meet every ruler of his day. How he was navigated so that he might appear even before Caesar. And so I'm simply saying to you, God does not need, a, you know, a team of people, even though he is um, raising teams and he has assembled companies. All it takes for God to win a particular space is just an individual who knows who they are, who knows what the agenda of God is pertaining to that particular space. We cannot keep postponing the day of salvation. We must embrace our identity in Christ and begin to do things. You see, we ourselves have been configured to the image of Christ. The Lord has transformed us. We have been reconfigured into the image of Christ. And what Jesus is very clear on in John chapter 14. So, you guys can take this thing further, much further than I have. You guys can exercise influence greater than I have. But of course, you will do that through me. I will do that through you. You see? He understood him and the father were one. The father was in him, he was in the father. It's the same thing with us. Jesus is in us, we are in him. Why are we failing to discharge the eternal agenda of God? Why are we failing to rebuild nations and societies in the image of the one we serve? Why are we failing to rebuild ruined cities? Why are we failing to rebuild devastations of generations and generations? The anointing is upon us to open gates to prisoners, to, to, to declare release of captives, announce the day of the Lord, the year of the Lord's favor. That day is today. We can't keep postponing salvation. 
The time of favor is today. The art of Melchizedek must be activated today, now. The signs must be seen, must arise, must manifest, must come to revelation today. Salvation applies to everything under the sun. It doesn't, it doesn't just apply to individuals. It applies to systems. There are systems that must be re rehabilitated. You see, when Jesus came, the era of the law was, was, was really coming to a place of collapsing. It needed rehabilitation. It was coming to, to a place of becoming obsolete. And then Jesus comes and he enacts a new order. There are systems that are obsolete. They should no longer be running. But they are still running because there is no alternative. There are knowledge forms. They should have been abandoned long time ago, but they can't be abandoned because we are not yet generated a new form of uh, epistemology, a new type of knowledge, a coherent type of knowledge. A systematic joining of ideas. So I'm saying I think we have limited salvation to issues of spirituality. The political systems need a rehabilitation. The economic system, the, the economic systems need rehabilitation. The whole issue of the distribution of, of resources. That system needs rehabilitation. When Daniel was in Babylon, he was able to influence systems. When Joseph was in Egypt, he was able to influence systems by the grace of God and by the orchestration of God. And my prayer is that by the grace of God and by the orchestration of God, we should be able to influence systems in our day. Why not change, transform nations in our day? The Russians must not panic. In foundations, um, of a godly society are found to have been destroyed, the Russians must do something about it and not panic about it and not postpone the revamping on society uh, because they don't seem to know what to do. We, this is a day of, of operating from clarity. This is a day of operating from clarity. We must know what it is we want to build and how it must be built. I believe that the day of wise master builders is upon us. The day of wise men is upon us. The day of um, causing great shifts, not just in the spirit, but even in practice is upon us. And soon and very soon the word of the Lord will come to pass. As the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth. Even as the waters cover the sea, so should the knowledge of the glory of the Lord cover the earth. Isaiah chapter 60 is very clear. We must arise for the light of the glory of the Lord is upon us. Even though they shall be dark, 
darkness on the face of the earth, thick darkness, but his light, his glory will shine on us. We must be very clear. We are people who are supposed to be clear about who they serve, the type of configuration that God has made the millennial, and not be apologetic and be looking upwards instead of doing the will of God. Because Christ is doing these things through us. Christ is already on the face of the earth, moving and working through us. Indeed, there shall be a manifestation of his coming, but he should come just to fulfill the word of God, not because his brothers have failed him on the face of the earth. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May he, may he lift his countenance towards you. May he be gracious to you. And may he cause you to know peace. In Jesus' name, amen.